2023 is a mental year, isn't it? We got cancel culture, we're seeing everybody getting cancelled. Artists, writers, philosophers. But I'm telling you right now, I am going to draw the line when they come for our cereals. It's going to happen. Cocoa Pops, they're going to be known as Pops of Colour. <laughs> Fruit Loops, Mental Health Loops. <laughs> and Sugar Puffs are going to be known as Sweet Homosexuals. <laughs> and I've got nothing against gay people, I just don't want to pour milk on them at 7 o'clock on a Monday morning. <laughs> I did that joke on my tour, a bloke in one of the audiences shouted out, mate, what about Honey Nut Querios? <laughs> <laughs> but we never cancel the things we want to cancel, do we? Like vegan cheese, or as I like to call it, I can't believe it's not soap. <laughs> but yeah, it's a delight to be here, but we're all going nuts. Everything has become so progressive. We're saying things that don't make sense. Like people want Idris Elba to be the next James Bond. Does anybody here want Idris Elba to be the next James Bond? No. Yeah, there are a few people, but let, let me tell you why you're wrong, okay? <laughs> Think who James Bond is. He's a man who goes around the world causing death, destruction and mayhem and getting away with it. The only person who could do that is a rich white bloke who went to Eton. <laughs> Boris Johnson would make a more believable James Bond than Idris Elba. Fuck it, Prince Andrew would make a more be <laughs> believable James Bond than Idris Elba because he's been getting away for his, with his crimes for years, plus he's great under pressure because he can't sweat. <laughs> Two claps, mate, that's what I fucking live for. That's why I've come to do this cash-neutral gig. It's patronising, fuck off. <laughs> but no, we live, in, we live in weird times. We got the virtue signal now as well. That blows my mind, virtue signalling. You see, you, you, I like that. No laughter, just one woman going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it, it's just frustrating. You see, oh, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's the men that are the worst. It's the men that are the worst. They always go online going, you know, I, I hate racism, I hate sexism. And they'll go on time after time after time. And whenever I see these men on social media, there's always a little bit of me that thinks to myself, yeah, I bet you fucked a kid. <laughs> what have you got to hide? What have you got to hide? Why are you pretending? They always say things like, I'm 100% anti-racist, I'm 100% anti-fascist. You're meant to be, you fucking idiot! <laughs> That's quite literally the baseline for morality. That's like me when I was a, t when I was a teacher going into work with a t-shirt that said, your kids are 100% safe with me. <laughs> and everything's a culture war. Everything is a culture war when the fact is it doesn't need to be a culture war. Like the migrant crisis, that's a culture war now. You've got people on the left going, oh, you know, these people are weak, they're vulnerable. As a society, we are judged by how we treat the vulnerable. The right are going, fuck them. No, no, they're not, right? The right are going, no, we need strong borders in order to work out who is coming into the in and out of this country in order to keep this country safe. And people go to me, Francis, what do you think? And this is what I think genuinely, right? I think if you are one of these people who flees war and persecution, crosses continents, crosses through Europe, gets into a dinghy at the dead of night, pays a people smuggler thousands of pounds, risking life and limb to get to this shore, that only proves one thing. France is a shithole. <laughs> Can you imagine fleeing war to Aleppo, getting to France, talking to a Frenchman and going, absolutely fucking not, mate. <laughs> Keep going. That's it, Abdul. We are not staying with these pricks a moment fucking longer. <laughs> if necessary, mate, I'll fucking live in a, in a camp on the fucking river. I'm not talking to them. <laughs> Everything has become a culture war. Like the way we talk about men, the way we talk about men is ridiculous. Everything is toxically masculine. 
everything is toxic masculinity. Everything is bad. We used to worship men, now we demonize men. Simple things like men used to do and enjoy and love for years, like bottling someone outside of a Weber Spoons. <laughs> yeah. I'm from South London, mate. That's my fucking culture. <laughs> and now all of a sudden we're told, we're told, we're saying we can't do it. And you know, there's women here going, no, Francis, I like it. I prefer it now. Men are kinder, they're more sensitive, they listen. But let me tell you something, ladies, right? When you're, when we've got the barbarians at the gates, who do you want defending you? Do you remember in the 2019 London Bridge terrorist attack? Do you remember that? When that terrorist was going around stabbing people? He tried to get access into a pub. You know what happened? He met a Millwall fan. <laughs> He shouted the words, Allah Akbar. The Millwall fan said the words, on oh, Millwall, you cunt. And hit him with a chair. Because sometimes, ladies, you need a racist. I'm going to be honest with you. We never would have lost the Afghanistan war right if we had Millwall fans in the front row. We would have shipped them over, right? Put them in the front line. They would have been lined up. We would have gone, Lazza, Shazza, Dazza, Bazza. You see that lot over there? No, they're not towels, mate. They're turbans, right? You see that lot over there? Yeah? Look at them. That lot, mate, they're West Ham. <laughs> Off your fucking go. Yeah, but here's the thing, we've still got a little problem with racism. Like, my, I'm half South American, one of my cousins is, was called, is called Johan. And when he came over to London in the 90s, he faced a little bit of racism. Johan is a really handsome man. He's half Venezuelan, half Austrian, tall, green eyes, coffee-coloured skin, long black hair. So when he got to London in the 90s, they called him a packy. Of course they did, right? <laughs> And that really upset me, because it's devastating to hear your own cousin getting racially abused. It breaks your heart, right? Because that's my culture, that's my heritage. Until one day he nicked my T-shirt and sold it. <laughs> so, what I did is I took, as a little act of revenge, I took Johan to go and watch a Millwall game. <laughs> and some of you may not be aware with, or fay with Millwall fans. All I'll say is this, they're very gender critical. <laughs> they believe men are men and women should shut the fuck up. <laughs> and we took him to watch a game and we went to watch a match and it was all fine. And as we left the match, I noticed there was this group of blokes, right? And they started sh yelling the word packy at my cousin. And I said to Johan, I think we better be going. So we started walking and there was this group behind us and they started following us. And the quicker we walked, the quicker they walked. And this word kept getting used. And the quicker we walked, the quicker they walked until we started running, then they started running. Then we started sprinting, and then they started sprinting. And halfway through, my cousin knew what was going on. He knew he was getting racially abused, even though he didn't understand the words. He stopped, turned around, looked at the head racist, and said the words, Red el coño mama huevo. <laughs> And the head racist turned around, looked at his mate and went, fucking hell, Gary, this packy speaks Italian. <laughs> but I'll leave you with this. We seem to be more divided than ever. And if you've got mates that you disagree with, please, please don't push them away. Please don't push them away. Because all it's going to do is make us even more divided, create us, make, make us even more atomized. Because here's the thing, guys, right? It's really tough in this horrible world to be a nice, kind, sensitive, loving individual. Where we live in this fucked up society where things like estate agents exist. Because <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, every time I see an, a group of estate agents, I behave a little bit like a racist. <laughs> I'll look at them and I'll think, 
Yeah, there's too many of them around here. <laughs> they all look the same to me. <laughs> look, guys, chill out. I'm not prejudiced. Some of my best mates are estate agents. <laughs> All I'm saying is, uh, I wouldn't want one marrying my daughter. Because <laughs> what happens if they had a kid? It would come out half normal, half estate agent. And we know what we call one of them, don't we? A recruitment consultant. <laughs> <laughs> one recruitment consultant in. I thought I could smell cheap cocaine. There we go, guys. I'm only doing a short set. It's been a joy and a pleasure. I've been Francis Foster. Thank you very much.